One of the main problems with EV ownership is the hassle of charging the damn thing. It's fine if you have the luxury of an off-street parking space where you can charge overnight, assuming that is the thing doesn't burn to the ground taking your house with it. But for the majority of people, having to rely on public charging is a ridiculous inconvenience. Even with fast DC chargers, you're looking at a minimum of half an hour to charge in ideal conditions, compared with a few minutes at the gas station. And they are few and far between compared with slower chargers. Charging stations are also incredibly complex and frighteningly expensive to build. Add to that the cost of electricity, which makes running a charging station not worth the money. And you can see why nobody wants to build them, and plenty of companies that have are already out of business. And then you have to add in the cost of safety systems to ensure you don't electrocute people, which is the main risk and the main cost, as we'll see. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer, now Sydney-based YouTuber. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and let me know what you think by leaving a comment. And if you want to keep informed about all the EV and net zero insanity that we're suffering at the moment, click that subscribe button down below to enable notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, you can buy me a coffee at the link in the description or by scanning the QR code on screen. A gas station is essentially just a tank in the ground with some pumps. Very simple technology. A fuel delivery arrives every week, fills up the tank, and you're good to go. Contrast this with the ludicrous complexity of a charging station, which must rely on a full-time, high-power connection to the electricity grid and then provide for all the other infrastructure, such as cooling systems and batteries, to keep the thing going. And the most expensive part of the whole setup is the safety systems to prevent you being inadvertently electrocuted if there is a fault in the charger and you touch your car. They're trying to cut the costs of this safety equipment, but to be honest, would you want that if you were an EV driver? Inside EVs reports, and quite frankly after reading this, there's even less chance of me ever buying an EV or going anywhere near a fast charging station. Fast chargers are stupid expensive, here's why. More than half the cost of a new DC fast charger is wrapped up in a single safety circuit. Experts say that could change. Ever wonder why DC fast chargers are so expensive to build? A single 300 kilowatt level 3 charger that's just one stall at a public DC fast charger can run north of US $100,000. The cost is just one of the reasons the infrastructure has been slow to build out and has relied heavily on the government cheese a la federal funding. Let's talk about what's inside of that charger. Crack it open and you'll find about $90,000 worth of electronics that move electricity from the grid to your car's battery. Here's the kicker. An estimated 60% of that cost is for one safety circuit to make sure you don't accidentally turn into toast if something goes wrong. That means more than half the cost of an EV charger goes into keeping you alive. Great. That system is called an isolation link. According to IEEE Spectrum, the actual cost of this protection layer is an estimated $54,000. Scale that up to a full 8-stall charging location, that's more than $430,000 dedicated to only safety equipment. Here's how it works. Gas pumps rely on mechanical flow control to stop fuel from flowing into a car. EV chargers deal with high voltage electricity, often at 800 volts or more. Electricity is lazy, it's going to find the shortest path to ground. And if things go sideways at such a high power, it's enough to fry you instantly, yay! You can see why safety is such a big deal. An isolation link achieves a safety principle known as galvanic isolation. This means taking two separate circuits in a single electrical system and preventing current from flowing between them. In the world of EV chargers, this means severing the electrical path between the charger's power source and the car. So on the off chance that a fault does occur, the energy has nowhere to go but back into the grid. And they're desperately trying to get rid of this extra cost as it is adding yet another barrier to the building of fast charging stations. One option is to ditch the isolation link in the charging station entirely and rely on the one in your car. 
The problem is that the one in your car will only deal with level 2 charging, which is faster than home charging but still painfully slow compared to DC fast charging. And if you want to put a level 3 capable isolation link in your car, you're going to have to pay for it, which just transfers the cost from charging station to car buyers. And it also transfers the risk onto you. If the isolation link in your car fails for any reason, then there's no backup. The risks associated with a charging station are far greater than from a fuel station. Yes, some idiot could light a match, but, barring acts of willful stupidity, the process of transferring hundreds of kilowatts of power into your car is inherently and vastly more dangerous than pumping liquid fuel into a tank. And the regulators are not going to take the risk of removing that protection and seeing people get a lethal jolt while charging as the article rightly concludes. The argument for removing galvanic isolation makes sense on paper. The original Tesla Roadster used non-galvanically isolated charging, but it also didn't have the capability to use DC fast charging. Modern DCFCs pumping huge amounts of current into a modern EV's battery require a bit more safety measures, hence an isolation link. But if, and that's a big if, the industry cannot only develop a reliable and safe way to accomplish this, it could be a game changer for the EV charging game. Looking from a more realistic lens, the world is already struggling to get public charging right, and nobody wants to be the first to take a gamble on safety. Charging companies, automakers and even regulators would need a rock-solid guarantee that any non-isolated system was just as safe as today's chargers. Even if that were true, it could take years to roll out any improvements, especially one where safety should be such a major focus. For now, expect new EV chargers to keep costing a fortune. Because if there's one thing that the industry just isn't willing to cut corners on, yet, it's making sure you don't get zapped. So the only viable competitor to a regular gas station, the DC fast charging station, will continue to be ludicrously complex and expensive. And there is literally no way around this. There's a much more in-depth article on the IEEE website, which I will link to in the description if you're interested in how these safety systems work. It's an interesting read. Even if you solve the isolation link problem, you'll still have to pay for multiple megavolt amp grid connections, even for a modest eight chargers rated at 350 kilowatts, plus all the other infrastructure that goes around it. For the foreseeable future, this does not make economic sense, and the gas station will continue to reign supreme.